Hey guys, CB Super. Today I'm going to be going over EbSynth and DaVinci Resolve. So if you haven't heard of EbSynth, it is essentially exactly what you're seeing on the screen right now. It takes a series of images, which we know to be as video, and it attempts to take some key frames that maybe you paint or have been altered in some way, and it tries to superimpose all of that into the video footage. And if that doesn't really make sense, uh, the best way I could probably explain it is it kind of does like a little bit of rotoscoping for you. There are some limitations, but I'm not going to be going over too much about the limitations and more about the positives of Epson. So if you're looking to pick up Epson, it is free as of right now. It is still in the beta, so I don't know if it plans on being a paid service later on. But as of right now, you can go ahead and download it for free and play around with it. I'm going to show you how to do this all inside of DaVinci Resolve, but there are a couple other programs that would probably make your life a little bit easier. Programs like Sketchbook or Krita, programs that are made to be used to, you know, do some digital painting or digital uh, Photoshop type work, or even just use Photoshop if you have Photoshop available. I have played around using Photoshop. It is a lot easier than using the Fusion page inside of DaVinci Resolve, but I'm going to show you how to do this all for free only using DaVinci Resolve. So it's going to be a round trip of DaVinci to Epsynth and then back to DaVinci. And it's interesting, but it is, uh, it is a little bit more difficult, I will say. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to be using some free stock video footage from Wolfgang Langer. You can find it over at Pexels.com. The link will be in the description down below. Feel free to follow or donate to him. And again, if you want to pick up Epsynth, just go ahead and hit this download. And you don't have to sign up your email address if you don't want. You can always just say no thanks. Just start the download and you'll have Epsynth beta for free. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to DaVinci Resolve. And I've already had the video uploaded to DaVinci Resolve. All you have to do is import the video the normal way that you import things. You are going to want to make sure that you do have the correct playback frame rate. So you want your frame rate to match whatever the video is. And this is very important because if you have a, say, 25 frames per second video and you're trying to do it in a different frame rate, say 24 or 23, you may not have all of the frames that you need when you get over to Epson. So just ensure that your playback frame rate and your frame rate in general for your project matches the actual video footage that you're using. Using. All right, once you've done that, let's go ahead and take a look at our footage. We'll notice that it is just this female and she is moving around a little bit. So this action right here where she moves to the side and she turns away from the camera, that's going to be difficult for Epson to handle. Now it can handle it, but we would have to make more keyframes in order to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to use all the way up until right about here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. And I think this will give you a good demonstration of the workflow for using EbSynth and DaVinci Resolve, but it's not going to complicate and add too many problems to it because there are a lot of limitations to EbSynth, but I'll show you some of the ways to get around. It. All right, so here's our video footage. The first thing that we need to do is we need to export our video into a series of PNG sequences. So in order to do that, we unfortunately don't have a PNG option in the formats here. You'll notice that there are... TIFFs, there are EXRs, but there are there's no PNG option. So what we're going to have to do is we're actually going to go over to the Fusion page and we can do it here. And it's a nice little workaround. I do wish that they add a PNG sequence for export in the future. Maybe we'll get that in 18. I don't know. I'm working in 17 right now and uh, we don't have it. So in order to export PNGs, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a saver node behind my media in node. So with my media in node selected, I'm just going to hit shift space and that's going to bring up the quick tool select and I'm going to type in the word saver hit add and now I have a little saver node here now what the saver node is going to allow us to do is we're going to come over to the right here and we're going to be able to browse directly to our EBSynth folder you are absolutely going to want to make a folder for this project um, you can call it whatever you want it doesn't have to be called EBSynth I just titled it EBSynth to make it a little bit easier I would suggest making two folders one for keys and then one for the video and I'm going to put this PNG sequence in the video folder. So I'm just going to double click on the folder. I'm going to title it woman. And you'll notice that it says EXR files. Don't worry about that. As long as it says whatever the title you want plus dot PNG, it's going to save it out as a PNG sequence. Go ahead and hit save. And now you'll notice that nothing has actually happened. But once we come up to fusion and hit render all savers, it's going to go ahead and start working. Now this may take a little while. This is probably only going to take maybe a minute on my computer, but this might take, I don't know, upwards of 30 minutes, an hour, depending on your computer. My computer works a little bit quicker because it's, you know, it's got a little bit more underneath the hood. 
All right, so render is complete. We'll notice that the total render time was 57 seconds, so just under a minute, and the average render time was two frames per second, which is not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and I'm just gonna minimize this and go check out the folder. So inside of my video folder where all my PNG sequences are, you'll notice that it has the title and then it says 000. So that is the very first frame and then one being the second frame. And it goes all the way to the end, which is 117. That's great. So I have 117 frames. Now, I think they're all here. I haven't gone in and made sure that they're all here sequentially. So I was working with some 25 FPS footage earlier and it would constantly drop like one frame, maybe two frames throughout the process, and I would get an error with absence. So if you're having that problem, one thing you can do is, let's say I don't have a frame 50, I can just duplicate this frame 40, and then I can retitle it as frame 50, and even though these two frames will be the exact same, you probably won't notice it because it's only one frame difference. And then that way, Ebsynth will know that that is sequentially the next frame that it needs to work on. And so it's kind of just a little tricky process. Now, I've done this a few times, and I know that one of the good frames that I want to use is probably this keyframe of 82. Let me go ahead and click on this and show you all. You'll notice that, yes, she has a little bit of movement on her hands, and so that's going to be a little bit difficult to deal with, but her mouth is open. And anytime you're using a talking subject, you want to try and use a keyframe where the mouth is open. This is going to make it a lot easier for Ebsynth to tell, and it won't have to fill in data, where if she was to open her mouth later on in the film, Ebsynth won't know because it didn't use that as a keyframe. Think of keyframes as just as you would inside of real animation. They are like the extreme movement of your animation. So if the extreme movement is a talking piece and she is talking, we would probably want her mouth to be open at that point. So this is the frame that I'm going to use as a keyframe. I'm just going to come over to this woman 0082.png. I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to come down here, copy, and I'm going to come back to my root Ebsynth folder, come over to the keys, and now I'm just going to hit control, command and control V to paste it. And so now I've taken that picture and that is now going to be my key frame. If I was to load this into Ebsynth right now, it wouldn't really change anything because we haven't done anything to this frame. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some changes to this frame and you'll see how those changes are emulated throughout the entire video. So let's go back over to DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to head back over here. I don't really need this. Now that I'm done with that, that's fine. I am going to take this key though and I'm going to drop this right onto my media pool. Now I did that so that I have a nice frame, a nice clean frame and anything that I do to this frame will be done and saved to this frame inside of the key folder. So let's go ahead and take this and we're going to drop this on our media pool. We're going to drop this on our timeline and now we'll see that it's not really moving. So and that's because it's just a still frame of frame 82. I'm going to go ahead and just make it a little bit smaller because it doesn't need to be so big. I do want to be at the very beginning of the frame because I'm going to be doing a lot of painting. And when I'm doing painting, I like to start at the very beginning. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to Fusion now. And I'm going to set a few things up. First things first is this is going to be the base image. I, I don't want it to look like this when I'm done. So I'm going to do a bunch of things to it. But before I do that, I want a background. I'm going to just do some really quick animating here. So please don't take this as like a indication that I am an expert on animation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this background. And this is how I'm going to start it for now. I'm going to take this media and I'm going to drop it on the output of the background and then it's going to give me a merge node. Now if I was to take this merge node and plug it out, nothing appears to have changed. But in reality, this media is now merged on top of this background. And at some point, we're going to draw on this background and then we're going to remove this media altogether. I don't want a video that looks just like the video I had. I'm actually going to be painting a new video and that will be superimposed throughout the entire video using Epson. Let's just say we were to do a very simple thing. So simple that it probably won't even make sense. To do that, let's go ahead and I'm just going to paint right on this background. But the problem is this background is black and black isn't going to work very well. So I'm actually going to change the color of this to white just for now. And eventually I'll change it back to black and I will actually remove the alpha so that it's transparent because Epson actually handles transparency really well. But for now, we're going to leave it as white and then 
after this, I'm gonna add a paint node. So let me go ahead and bring in a paint node. Now, the first thing you always do with a paint node is you make sure that the stroke duration is however long you want it to last. In this specific instance, we have 27 frames. So we actually have 28 because the zero frame is an actual frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this stroke duration. I'm gonna turn it all the way up to 30. That'll cover us past 27 frames. And the color, so the color right now is white. So white on white isn't gonna show. So I'm gonna start with black for right now. Now we can see how big our stroke is. Let's go ahead and I put a stroke down. You don't see anything. And that's because right now the background is loaded and not the paint node. But if I load the paint node, you can see that we did in fact make a stroke. I'm gonna go ahead and command and control Z just to undo that. And I wanna change some things about this brush just to make it look a little bit more like an outline. Let's go ahead and we're gonna change it to something a little bit more solid. I'm also gonna size this down quite a bit. Now you can use a Wacom tablet. In fact, I will use a Wacom tablet later on when I'm doing more detailed work. But for right now, I'm just going to do a few things just so you can see it and then I'll show you the process and then you can go back and do a lot more work to it if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and make it just a little bit smaller and to get just a little bit smaller, we're gonna go ahead and hold down Command and Control and I'm going to size it down. Now it's just gotten a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna draw in some of these features. So I wanna draw in these eyes perhaps and we can see it over here, what it's doing. I wanna draw in maybe this eye Okay, that's starting to look like an eye. Let me just draw in some of these nostrils here, maybe some of these lines. And again, it doesn't have to look amazing, but it does need to somewhat resemble the shape of the face of the person that you're you know, painting. And the reason is because it can't create new shapes out of things that it doesn't have the data on, right? So it has the data on this woman talking and that's it. So it can't put things that are not this woman talking. So you are a little bit limited in that respect, but that doesn't mean that you can't use your imagination and make all kinds of different things. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to outline these lips a little bit because I want to see the talking. And I know this looks amazing, but I'm going to go ahead and size this down even a little bit more. I know this is just perfect. And I might even just give her these teeth back a little bit. And so we can see that we can kind of see the teeth there. We can see the nose. I'm not super happy with the nose. Let's go ahead and draw in these eyebrows a little bit. And if you want to see what you're actually doing, um, you can actually do that. What you could do is you can either take this merge node and you can merge it up here and then you can actually blend this down a bit. And that'll let you see kind of what you're looking at. Uh, you can also flip this. So I hit Command or Control T and that'll flip it. And then I can go ahead and blend this down a little bit. Um, you can even take this media and you can put it over here in the right. Um, and then if you just want to be able to see, you can even work over here on the left. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually see a little bit better about what you're working on. Um, sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. It just really depends on the project that you're working on and how you want to work on it. We've got this going on. Um, we've got a little bit of the nose done. Let's go ahead and finish this up. I'm just going to add this eyebrow over here. And that looks pretty amazing. Super happy with the way that turned out. Let's just, uh, let's finish up with uh, maybe this face jawline. Uh, and now that I think about it, probably using the mouse, not an amazing idea but you'll get a, at least an idea of how this works. I'm, right now, I'm just uh, outlining the hair because um, I do want the hair. And this is, you know, it's just one of those things, like as detailed as you want to be is how detailed uh, you're going to get. And you'll, you know, like I know this looks terrible, but like you will be surprised at how well this program works. Um, let's go ahead and let's... I don't know, let's just go ahead and trace her shirt as well. Like that. And yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is, I may do this again, but I will do it with the Wacom tablet. Yeah, and so this actually is working out pretty well for, you know, just, uh, for just running through it kind of quick. All right, so that's pretty much everything outlined. Um, if we take a look at what this looks like by itself, we can see that uh, doesn't look too amazing, right? But I think what you'll see is uh, it'll be surprising um, how 
this will animate. This this itself is going to animate. And um, let's just go ahead and leave it white for right now. And I'm just going to right click on this image right here, and I'm going to save image. I'm going to go to the EBSynth, to the key. It says it already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes, yes you do. You want to replace it. So now that that's done, we have pretty much everything we need to start the EBSynth program. So you downloaded EBSynth. I happen to have it right here on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and double click it. This is what it looks like. This is all it looks like. You can tap this advanced if you want. I'm not going to mess with any of these things. Um, I've gone through a lot of tutorials and they pretty much say that this is how you want it set up. So if yours doesn't look like this, go ahead and get it set up like this. The way This is how it came when I started it. I'm not exporting it to AE. I'm going to be working with it completely inside of DaVinci Resolve. So it's pretty easy. So I have my keys in my video here. I'm just going to take my key folder. I'm going to drop it right on keys. And you'll notice it changed to women.png. Take this video folder, drop it right onto video. You'll notice it changed to video.png. And take a look at what our project directory is. It's already found my cbsuper.desktop.ebsynth. And you can see right here what it's going to output. So it's going to output a folder and it already knows that frame 82 is my keyframe. So it's going to synth to the left and it's going to synth to the right. And it's essentially going to synth back and forth using one keyframe. It's going to synth all the way to zero and then up all the way to 117. Now it's not always that you want to use something that's in the middle. In fact, you may want to use three or four or even more keyframes Keyframes showing that extreme movement, that's going to really help it out, but then you're going to have to, at some point, take all of those and blend them together. And I'm not going to go into how to do that today because I'm just going to be using the one keyframe, but it's essentially cutting and pasting or changing the opacity of those layers. We can either hit synth or we can hit run all. Generally, I hit run all. Usually, you'll have more than one keyframe, and so that kind of helps. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run all right now, and we'll let it do its thing. You can see a little progress bar here. It'll tell you when it's done. And if you want to see EBSynth actually working, all you have to do is double click on this folder that it's outputting to, and you can actually see it work in real time. So what it's doing is it's trying to figure out what each one of these frames should look like. And you'll notice that it's not necessarily working starting out at the beginning. It started off at 80, and it's moving either left or right. In this case, it appears to be moving up. So you'll notice that it found that there was no frame 62. Because it doesn't have frame 62, we're going to have to go in and we're going to have to fix this. Let's go into the EBSYNTH folder in the video out, and let's take a look at what frame 62 is. So we'll notice that we may have some type of resolution error, or we may have some error. For whatever reason, we don't have frame 62. It goes from 61 to 63. In order to fix this, all we have to do is click on 61 or 63, Command or Control C, and then Command or Control V. What that's going to do is that's going to duplicate that frame. Now I want to come over here and I want to change the name. Now I really only need to change the name up to 61. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to type in uh, 62. And you'll notice that it moved woman 0062 just over to the right. And so now it goes 60, 61, and 62. So in order to fix it, just come back over here, hit run all again. It's going to figure out everything that it needs to do. It now knows that it has the correct, hopefully the correct amount of frames, and it's going to go through. Now it is going to reprocess all the frames that you just processed. That's okay. If you were working on a very large project that took a very long time to render, you may want to only process the frames that it didn't get processed. Um, that's definitely an option. In this instance, this takes just a few minutes, so I'm just going to go ahead and let it process all of the frames again. Let's go ahead and take a look here, see how it's doing. So we made it past 62. That's good. That's a good sign. So the interesting thing is it's processing different frames. Uh, it's not processing a certain direction. I mean, I don't know if that's just how computers work. I don't know how any of this AI functions, so I can't say that it's doing something. It's doing this or it's doing that. I really don't know how it works. I just know that it works. And it's super interesting. While it's doing its thing, I'm going to go ahead and close that down for now. And I'm going to just let it run. It's almost done. Okay, and it appears to be done. That probably took about, I don't know, two minutes, if that. Uh, let's go ahead and where it says out 82, we see we've got zero and it goes all the way to frame 117. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command and Control A to select all of them. I'm going to go back over to DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to go back into the edit page. I don't necessarily need this anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that for right now. 
and I'm just going to bring this entire sequence in. You'll notice it's 118 frames. I'm going to drop it right onto the timeline. Now, if I was to take this and just drop it right here, you'll notice that we have an animation. And it works pretty well. We are missing a few things, right? We're missing a little bit of detail here. You can see that it gets a little garbled, a little bit messed up. But look at the face. It's talking. We, we didn't do we didn't do very much to get there right um, this is an animation we just animated and it only took I don't know however long this video has gone on that's uh, it's pretty impressive how can we make this look better tons of different ways right we could add layers we can add colors to it um, let's show how we can do some of that so of course there's a ton more you probably saw the intro it was much more detailed than this this is this is a very powerful thing I mean this is like very quick animation. I could really see using this for facial animations probably more than anything. Um, just because you can get really quick and cheap facial rigs and animations and you don't have to animate them. It's essentially just live plates that are doing all the work. I don't know. I hope you guys see the benefit of this. I know this was just a really silly demonstration uh, and just a really quick workflow for it. Um, I will show you a couple things. If you want to hang out for just a couple more minutes, I'll show you how you can do this a little bit more in depth and you could add a little bit more depth to the actual lines. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this again, but this time I'm going to show you how to add some color and maybe do some masking. Okay. Let's go get a new frame 82. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all those. That was pretty cool. I mean, you know, we did it. That's nice. Let's do a different frame. I'm going to, you know what, let's do two frames. So I'm going to go ahead and grab frame zero, copy this, bring it over to keys, delete this one and control V. All right. So we got woman zero, zero, zero. And I'm also going to do, we'll do frame 82. So we'll have two frames and I'll show you how to blend them together. That's kind of fun. All right. So we'll use this one again. Actually, let's go to frame 81. I think her hand moves a little bit less. Let's copy, go into keys, control V. All right. So we're going to use these two frames. So if I go back over to DaVinci Resolve, I can go ahead and delete that because it's gone now. It doesn't exist. Take these, bring them over. And then let's just drop them both over here. They don't need to be very long because again, we're not going to be you know, doing much to them. Something like that, jump over to Fusion. All right, so the process doesn't change all that much. This is the first frame. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go about this uh, pretty quick and easy. And I'm actually going to save some of my work and I'm going to bring it over to the next frame. It's going to make things just a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this for now. And just like I did last time, I'm going to bring in a background. And let's just, you know, we'll leave this as a white. Actually, no, I promised you that we would turn this into an alpha. So let's go ahead and do that. And then this media in is going to come somewhere towards the end. Since uh, maybe somewhere around there. And I will still start with a outline because I do think that outlining it is, is, is pretty easy. Now we could do an outline with a mask or we could do an outline with a uh, with the pen again. This time I'm gonna show you how to do it with a polygon, just using just a regular old polygon and a background. And so it's just gonna be a polygon stroke. Now let's go ahead, we can probably start, uh, let's just let's just start right here with the, the arm here. And I'm just going to follow this along like so. And actually let's take this merge over here. And that way, at some point we'll actually be able to see. And so this is really easy because what I'm doing is I'm just using my mouse and I'm just clicking along this cloth line. And we use this in the same way that we would make pretty much any mask. And I'm just masking here. I can get as close to this as I want. I can even get all of the little intricate details, all of the little ruffles here if I want. It's just more points on my mask. And because I'm not moving this, I'm not having to animate this, doesn't really matter how many points I use. It's pretty much like foolproof, really. Um, it's it's a really powerful thing that is really cool. Now here you you will have to decide: Do I want to maintain just the overall outline? You could, or do I want to just outline the shirt? You know, you have that option. I'm just going to stick with the hair. I'm just going to do a simple hair outline here. You'll see where this comes into play a little bit later. It'll it'll make a little bit more sense. We'll actually use and reuse some of these uh, polygon lines, and it'll make a little bit more sense here in a few minutes. All 
All right, so that's pretty much the entire sweatshirt. I'm gonna just do this right here. And so what we have here is just a basic outline. Now, it's essentially like a mask, right? So we have this mask, but we're gonna create additional masks inside. So I'm gonna probably want a mask for her hair. I'm gonna want a mask for her sweater. There's a lot of this I could use, and there's a lot of this I can reuse. Let's just say I was to Command C, Command V, this polygon line, and maybe I want to get rid of all of these. I can just come up and hit delete. That gets rid of all of those polygons. Now I can come in here, I can get a little closer, and I can just start adding some lines for this. Uh, and don't worry about the, the shape of this line. I'll show you how to fix it real easily here in just a minute. Yeah, that looks a little wonky, but if we go ahead and take this uh, Shift S, it's gonna go ahead and smooth those out. I may have to take this tangent right here and fix it and take this tangent right here, fix it. But there we go. So now we have essentially just a sweater, right? But it's not completely sweater because what do we have here? We are missing some arm portions. So the nice thing though is that these will match up perfect with the rest of it. So now all we have to do is we can just kind of start tailoring this just a little bit and we can kind of fix it. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. It doesn't have to be this way. This is just the way that I'm doing it. Um, you, could, you could make a simple outline. We can do all kinds of things. The neat thing about doing it this way is you'll see that um, there, we'll have a lot of options later on with uh, outlining and whatnot. All right, so I don't necessarily want this polygon to be a part of this, right? And instead of it being a solid polygon, let's click off solid and let's give it just a little bit of border width. And now we have an outline of our person. Now we still have um, some of this polygon here that we will use. We'll go ahead and bring in a, another instance of a background and we'll put this on top. Let's see what this looks like. But I don't necessarily want it to be this color. Let's say, Maybe I want it to be the color of uh, her original shirt. I can go ahead and steal that color. That looks pretty good. Now, it is a complete animation. I could add texture to this. There's any number of things that I could do to make this look a little bit nicer. Let's say we want the, the skin of her arm. I don't have to go back and reuse these polygons. I can actually just come in and create new polygons on a background. And let me show you what that looks like. So let's take this background here and let's just make it the color of her skin. And then let me add some polygons here. So let's start here and I'll just trace this line right here. Really quick and dirty, it doesn't have to be amazing. Again, this is as good as you want it to be. So there's one, we don't actually see it. So let's go ahead and bring it back in. And you can see it probably needs a little bit of texture, but just as for what it is, it doesn't look too terrible. Let me just straighten these up a little bit so they look a little nicer. And let's just move this over some. Now. Anytime you're working with this same color, I find it's easier just to add another polygon. So let me go ahead and add one more polygon into that same color, but this time we're gonna do this arm over here. And because all we're doing is we're looking at the arm closer, we're not actually uh, changing the shape of it, right? In reality, it's gonna be the right correct size. Let me take let me take some of these and let's smooth them out just so they don't look so crazy. And maybe get rid of this one. All you gotta do is hit delete and it's gonna remove that keyframe and you can smooth out some of these keyframes so they look a little nicer. Now, in any time, um, you can keep back coming back here and checking it out. You'll notice that there are some gaps here. So you get to decide, do you wanna fix that here in the polygon or do you wanna fix that here in the shirt? And in this instance, it looks like the shirt might be the place to fix it here. So let's just bring it a little bit closer. Uh, we're just doing a sketch, so it probably doesn't need to look perfect. We also are missing some of the blue shirt there. So it's a real simple thing. Just gotta add in another polygon here and we can add it right here so we can see what we're dealing with. And then now we have that triangle for the shirt. And I just did a little twisty loop there, which I don't like and it's off like that. And again, as good as you want to make it is how good it will be. And now you can see we have the shirt. Now we have a little bit of gaps here. We have a little bit of gaps there. And some gaps are okay to keep and maintain an actual gap so you can see through her arm and it would be a little bit more realistic. So we're missing uh, a bunch of other stuff like her hair. Let's go ahead and do her hair next or we can just do her face. Let's 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 go ahead and work on the face. So if this is the the skin color, let's bring out another one. Um, you can rename these if you want. Really simply just hit F2 on it and this could be uh, right arm. 
This one could be F2, left arm. And this one here could be face. Uh, and that just kind of keeps it in line so that you'll know exactly what is what. So let's go ahead and any place we see skin, we'll just go ahead and we're not going to worry too much about her ears. We can always come back. If we feel like we need ears, we can always come back and work on that. Um, this, you can also uh, just superimpose where you think her face is because we can still cover it with hair later. That might be more realistic. So there we have her face. Uh, we can add in all the facial features here in a little bit. Um, we'll just leave this as like a skin layer and then we can work on actual facial details in a little bit. Let's go ahead and uh, finish out with the hair before we work on some of the face details. So let's bring in another background. Let's go ahead and plug this background in here. And I'm just going to take the, the darkest hair color, maybe something like that. And I'm just going to add in polygon. And we, we will add some of these. We'll come back and we'll work on like getting the actual uh, hair detail a little bit later. So for right now, I'm just going to, and this doesn't even have to really match because again, like uh, some of this, we're going to be recreating and some of it is going to be kind of uh, newly created, right? So if that makes sense. And we can come back in and we can add some of this detail a little bit later. I just want to get like the bulk of the hair uh, because I'm going to come back and I'm going to add some swooping details using some uh, different colors in just a bit. But I do want to, if like her hair comes, swings out wide here, I do kind of want that because I feel like that is going to be moving in the animation and this is an animation so you know you do have some creative freedom and some liberty to uh, do it the way you want all right so now we've got hair she has hair doesn't look amazing we, you can see we're definitely missing some places uh, it might be beneficial to have some of it swoop in just a little bit and then some of it come out a little bit here just so we can fill in those spots uh, that looks pretty good. I think uh, I'm going to leave it like that. And again, I'll, I'll come back in here in a little bit and we'll do some detail work. All right, so we still need the facial details. Now, to do the facial details, um, I could use paint like I did on the last time. But in this specific instance, I think I'm going to continue with the color theme. So I'm just going to continue making colors. So let's go ahead and bring in another color. And this time the color will be, let's go with pink and we'll do her lips real quick. So let's get real close and we'll just get some nice lips here. And we will definitely have to come back in and smooth this out just a little bit. And then we'll also uh, work on doing the mouth, uh, the teeth and all that. And shift S, we'll smooth those out maybe uh, we don't want to move them all down. Maybe just move this down just a little bit. Maybe this up a little bit. We do want to follow the curvature of her mouth because her mouth is what's going to move. All right. So every time you mess this up, you'll notice that it pushes everything to the left. Uh, we could kind of clean some of this up by just uh, grouping. So Control G, Commander Control G, will group these all together. And that'll just make it a little bit easier to deal with. Um, all right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and see what we're dealing with here. And I want to do this uh, teeth. So let's bring in another one. And I know what you're thinking, like, this is a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work. Um, you're essentially just creating your character. So if we're only creating the character now, uh, imagine how much harder this would be if we had to redo this for every frame. So there's definitely uh, some things that we can do to kind of uh, speed this up, right? Um, we could have already made the character, like we could have a character sheet already. Uh, that would make this process probably go a lot quicker. Uh, you'll notice that I'm just doing individual polygons for teeth. I mean, we could also use shapes. We could even do some roto tracing. We could use some other programs that would probably make this a lot faster as well, like Krita, Photoshop, stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of different things that we could do, so don't feel like you have to pigeonhole yourself into doing things the way that I did them. Um, you know, you can use all different manner of different techniques. Uh, this is just the way that I'm doing it today. And so I'm just creating teeth, and then I will create like a darker backdrop that will be behind the teeth. And so one thing I just realized is that that actually will have to go in front of this layer, right? Because um, 
That way I don't have to really recreate this. So that's a great thing about Fusion. So I got these teeth ready. I'm going to go ahead and command control G that just to group it together. And the wonderful thing about this is it's so nonlinear. I can go ahead and just move this merge over instead of having to like do a bunch of things inside of uh, Adobe After Effects, you know, where I would have to like recomp it and move it around. I could just bring in a backdrop here or background node, just plug it in, we'll make it simple. And we'll do another polygon node, right? And I can just have this follow the lips line here. Maybe it comes out and then that way I at least just have a dark uh, backdrop here. And here's the great thing, look, soft edge, maybe not that much. Maybe just a little bit of soft edge. And now we have, it's just dark in those teeth. Yeah, do they look a little weird? Yeah, sure they do. But again, it's cartoonish, right? We're, we're just we're just working here. Let's not, let's not, let's not dwell on it too much, okay? My, my, my degree is not in art, it's in um, computer animations. So eyebrows, eyes, and a nose, maybe some wrinkle lines. I'm gonna probably speed through this a little bit. I think you guys kind of already get the idea of how to do this. And so the rest of it's just gonna be kind of like speedily done. That's a word, speedily, should be. So let's go ahead and let's just finish off with a jawline. Let's go ahead and group this together, move this out. And we haven't done really like a really great job of going through and saying what all of these pieces are. So this would be very difficult to replicate later on. You would definitely want to use underlays. You can use underlays like this. Just go ahead and select those, shift space, type in underlay. And then this will give you like just a easier visual thing. Maybe you wanna come in here and you wanna even just change the color of this un underlay, you can you can uh, set color. Let's go ahead and set it to yellow. And let's say that all yellow things are facial elements. So if it's part of the face, I could go ahead and group it together. I could even use a sticky note to say face or something of that nature. So shift space, sticky note, and then we can just double click on it, face. Let's, uh, this isn't the face, but let's just say it was. Right, so you can use a bunch of things to give you uh, a little bit more organization in your animation. And I know that you're probably thinking, wow, this is really hard and a lot of work. And it is. It's not the easiest thing on earth. But you can get like a really interesting animation from here. And it's going to be different than most of the things that you're seeing on the web. So that's kind of neat in its own respect. So let's just go ahead and give her a jawline here. And um, this will need to match up this outline out here. So let's go ahead and give it some border width like that. Uh, let's do one final thing. Let's give her some highlights. Not so much uh, for lighting because we could we could actually do that later. One more, one more little thing. Let's just use a paint node. Just make it real simple. Size the brush down a bit. It's down way small. And I am gonna use my Wacom tablet for this just because of the type of movement I'm not very good at with my mouse. Um, I'm actually not very good at it with without my mouse either, but I think it'll be a little bit if I do this. So I'll probably need to see what I'm doing. So in here, and that looks like way too much. So let's go ahead, we'll size this down quite a bit, softness down a little bit. Stroke duration still needs to go up to 30, and especially because I'm at this weird frame number. Actually, instead of 30, let's just do 90, just to make sure that the stroke numbers will match. And instead of white, let's do, let's. which I mean, I get it, the lightest color is probably like a white-ish color, but uh, we'll just do something like that. And um, I know that this is not amazing. This should probably be a little bit wavier and I'll have to probably come up and uh, fix a little bit of this. But, right, like if you're a real artist, like this would be way better, but I'm not. I'm a pretend artist. Something like this, right? It just gives us a little bit of definition of hair. And so that might be a bit strong. The nice thing is we can come into this paint and go into the opacity and we can't turn it down, right? And the reason we can't turn it down is because we've already painted on this frame. And that's okay. Um, one thing we can do is I can bring in a background, right? And I can take this and then this can go into the paint. And now we see that we have this and then I can just drive this back into that merge node and then like so. And so now this is what we have. But if we take this background and we turn that alpha down, 
Now we have the ability to control the blend and how much of that opacity will show through. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, so now we just have these lines and I just to like kind of help out that, that probably looks a little weird maybe if I can because uh, we don't really want to mess too much with the actual outline itself. Uh, we we want those outlines to be visible. That's going to help the EBSynth program uh, do what it needs to do. So we can erase some of these lines just to make it a little bit easier on it. Okay, so I, I don't know. That looks fine. I mean, it, you know, it definitely looks like an animation, right? Like, like the mouth still haunts my dreams, but that's okay. That's okay. We can we can deal with this. All right, so there is our rendered image. Um, one thing we can do is let's... I want to show you how it handles transparency, but in, in the future, we could add in cool backgrounds and all kinds of things. Let's go ahead and Command-G that just to group it so it looks a little bit nicer. Everything matches. Uh, the one thing we don't really need is we don't need this anymore, right? Because uh, we could just delete it or I can move it out altogether. It's not really necessary because all I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to save this image. And I want to save. All right, great. So that seems like we're done. Um, we're not because we have a second frame to do. So let's go over here and let's jump over to the next frame. And we look at it and we're like, oh my God, we have so much work to do. Well, not really, because let's come over here. And let's just go ahead and take all of this. Control or Command and Control C and jump over here. And we can just Command and Control V to paste it all. Just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, let's go ahead and take this media in. So let's go ahead and take this background node. It's a black background, remember? And we will turn the alpha down. And then let's take this media in. Let's put it in the same spot. So it's going to go way over here towards the end. Look over here. And we're, we're going to have to change some things, right? Like not everything is going to match up. And that's okay. We know that. But let's see how far off it is. So we're going to want to maybe turn down the blend a little bit. And we can kind of see that these things don't match up very well, do they? So it's going to be a matter of fixing this in the easiest way possible. So let's go ahead and start off just like if we were cleaning up something for animation. Let's go ahead and start with the this first, okay? Approximately 10 hours later. And I know that was a lot of work, right? But again, this still saves us a huge amount of time. So it matches up pretty well with this. So let's go ahead and save this image. It'll be the woman 81, all files. Make sure it says .png. Yes, we want to replace it. Just go ahead and get out of this. It's looking pretty neat. Okay, uh, now we have our keys. These are our two keys and we have our video, which is all of these frames that we, what do we got to do? Well, we got to do the exact same thing that we did last time. So let's go ahead and start, fire up EbSynth. I'm going to take the keys, drop it on the keys folder here. And I'm going to take the video, drop it on the video. And you'll notice that we have two sets of these keyframes now. So it knows that keyframe zero is the first keyframe, so it's probably not gonna go backwards, it's only gonna go forwards, but it's telling it to only go to frame 81. And we have it set, so frame 81 is gonna go all the way back to zero, but it's also gonna go up to 117. So you kinda need to decide, do you want it to continue going all the way to 117 and just duplicate frames, or do you want it to only stop at 81? And I'm actually going to have it go all the way to 117 because sometimes it may be able to handle certain frames better than if you weren't to do that. So let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and just run all. Um, it's going to each of these are going to have their own folders. I'm not going to go into the folders. I'm just going to let it do its thing while I go do other stuff. And then I'm going to come back when it's done. And hopefully we'll have two options to choose from to see which one has better frames. All right, so not sure how long that took because I had to go do other things, but let's take a look at what we have here. So if I jump in here, we can see frame zero. Okay, yeah, it's the animation. So, I mean, this might not be perfect, but it is it's, it, it is done, and that's really what matters. So let's jump over to DaVinci Resolve, and I'm going to delete... Uh, I'm just going to leave these keyframes in case I want to go back in and make more keyframes of it. I'm going to take this zero out. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to just call it, uh, I don't know, one maybe. And then I'm going to go to the out 81, control A, and I'm going to drop this over here as well. And I'm going to call this two, very originally named two. 
Now, this one goes from 81 out, and the other one goes from uh, 0 all the way through. So I'm just going to make a separate timeline. I feel like sometimes just making another timeline cleans things up, and I don't have to worry about all those. I'm going to take 1 and 2, and I'm going to drop them both onto this timeline. We'll see how it looks. Now, these are on black, right? So the reason they're on black is because there's just nothing behind it. But what we can do is we can come into the effects library and I'm just going to grab a solid color. It doesn't really matter what the color is. Uh, it probably shouldn't be black, but it doesn't necessarily need to be like a, a specific background color. Let's go ahead and change the color to like a blue or something. Blue and then turn up the opacity a little bit. Okay, and then let's take number one and let's just kind of take a look at number one. I can already see I'm having some problems with the hands here. But look at that talking so the talking turned out pretty good let's see what the number two looks like so number two looks a little bit better actually so it maintains the hand the entire time so maybe the mouth is better on one or the other yeah like so i have more teeth here i could see that i probably would need more keyframes and i might even have to fix this up a little bit but look at how easy that animation was um, there's certain things about this one that are better than the other. One, I, it's lost all of the hand detail, uh, whereas this one has all of the hand details. And I think it's because there was more hand in this. So if we jump over to this timeline, we look at how much hand we had in this one versus how much hand we had in this one. We didn't have any of the hands. And so this probably, now looking back, this wouldn't have been a good frame to use because it was missing her entire hand, whereas this one had much more of the hand. So... Anytime that you do not have it, it's going to streak downward if it's touching the edge of the frame. It, what would be nice when you're filming, if you're filming your own stuff, is that your entire subject will be in frame. And there will be enough contrast to where Epsynth can easily determine the lines that it needs to in order to uh, rotoscope itself out. This might have seemed like it took a long time, but I mean, once I had the character all worked out, like this, this was really easy to do. So if I was to choose, ideally what I would do is I would blend some of this one with some of this one, uh, some of one with some of two. I would take the best parts of one and I would take the best parts of two. Uh, I could either mask out, let's just say that the mouth turned out really well here for all of the talking. I might mask that out and put it on number two. Uh, and vice versa, because essentially the the all of the lines should be roughly in about the same place as long as they are relatively similar. Um, so that's just one of the techniques. Uh, of, there's a bunch of different techniques. If you just type in Absinthe and tutorials, you'll see some by Joel Haver. You'll see um, a lot of other tutorials where they go into much more in depth into how to make a very good Absinthe. This is just my process and the way that I do Absinthe. And I've only, this is, this is a new thing for me. I've only discovered this just a few days ago. So I'm really still playing around with it. But I do think that this could be a new avenue for creating original animations using uh, either stock footage or even, I don't know, shows. I've seen a lot of people take like episodes of The Simpsons or Rick and Morty and, and essentially recreate it using Epsynth videos. Kind of interesting. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys got something out of this. I know this is a really long video and I apologize. If you made it all the way to the end, congratulations. If you guys got something out of this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.